I don't really feel like I'm a good enough player to play Brainstorm or Fetch Lands in Legacy. I like my Legacy decks like I like my relationships with women. Simple and with very little interaction from the other person involved. I mean, it can be very hard to object through a thick layer of duct tape. Was that joke too much? I feel like it might have been too much. Maybe I should have that joke in there. Welcome, one and all, I am Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. And aside from being a socially maladjusted man-child with crippling levels of student debt and self-doubt, I like to play Magic the Gathering. This week we are playing Shardless Bug in Legacy. It's also known as Shardless Saltai for those of you with no respect for tradition or heritage, you fucking youngsters. The deck hinges around playing a strong attrition and permission-based game which is comparable to a more controlling version of traditional green and black X decks like Jund. However, unlike Jund, Shardless takes huge advantage of the fact that it plays the second best colour in Legacy, blue. It allows you to play permission in its combo like Force of Will while setting up its namesake synergy, a Shardless agent into value. Uh, brainstorm and Jace allow you to put the appropriate answer or threat on top of your deck and then cascade into it. Or if you really want to show your devotion to the gods of value and the patron saint of worth, you can cascade into ancestral visions. Who doesn't like drawing three cards? All aboard, the ballet train is leaving and its destination is victory. Welcome to the circus of value! In our first game, we're up against some form of lone deck, more than likely the rather ridiculously named Punishing Knight deck. He turned one to Dark Confident, which is exactly what we don't want to see in the game, which will more than likely become a real grind fest. We thought sees, revealing that our opponent has, is out of gas completely and is dependent upon that Bob surviving. Bob naturally draws him into Sylvan Library because the patron state of value was not on our side this evening. I am left with the difficult decision of what to decay, Bob, Mox, or Library. I decide to kill the Bob over the Library to reduce the card quantity and hope to rely on Agent and Jace to get ahead in quality. He wastes me, put me behind a turn, leaving me to deploy death right and feel a little bit sour about the whole situation. He plays a Dark Deaths that we know he's found across the last few turns since Thought Season him, which alongside his Thespian stage puts him in a very strong position. He passes the turn back to us, we play a land, we say our goodbyes to our loved ones and prepare for the end. The Ice Age has cometh. Marit Lage is here and she's going to forcibly squat on our face until we are dead. Kind of that weird BBW smothering pornography you are too ashamed to tell your mates that you're really, really into. Anyway, we're dead. Game two. I side in some needles for his lands and some stricks to block a Marit Lage and brace myself for another hard fought game. I don't feel this is a very good matchup for Shardless. I keep what looks like a very slow hand and hope he doesn't have a turn one bob again, which will force my decay and put me in a situation I don't really want to be in. Instead, he wastelands me. I can't decide at this point if that's even remotely wise, Lone decks and to an extent Death and Taxes decks can get away with a turn one waste against some other decks, but there's also the problem that newer players playing Legacy, and especially the Legacy Gauntlet, might be a bit too trigger happy with their wastelands, and I kind of get the feeling that's what's happening here. I play a Python Needle uh, that he allows to resolve before cracking his fetch land, so naturally, as a DT player, I name the fetch land and feel super smug about it. I have only one turn until Accessible Visions comes to suspend, I deploy the little planeswalker who could into the Death White Shaman and feel very good about my position in the game. My allies effectively stuck on one land, thanks to my Python Needle. My opponent draws into a Brock Decay and decides to use it on my Needle, then proceeds to punishing fire my Shaman, and now I feel very bad about my Brock position because he's a Grove of the Burn Brothers online, so the punishing fire combo can pick off any creature I deploy. I resolve Jace, the poster boy, and start ticking up to and buy my time against punishing fire. I bottom a Bob for my opponent and then play a Bob, a confirmed kick in my bollocks. Finally, the stars align. I Jace Storm into Shardless Agent and a Brock Decay and get ready for a glorious two for one. Although technically, I drew the agent off Jace, so I spent less than a card to do this, so it's kind of like a 2.5 for 1, which is better but far clunky to say out loud. I cast it into Brock Decay, I kill his dude, I put a dude into play, I am on the value train, all is good with the world, except for the fact that the country that I live in has just voted out of the fucking EU and put us into economic turmoil and uncertainty and probably ruin the future for my children and the people who voted for are all fucks and they have to put up with the fucking results. Sorry, it's been a weird Friday. Um, our Prime Minister resigned and I realised that he hadn't ate the hummus in the fridge before it had gone off so I felt like I'd wasted a whole £1.50. Punish fire means I can't keep anything on the board at the moment. I chance on one looks to shut me out of Deathrite Shamans and Brainstorms. I play Strix to dig deeper, but another one bites the dust of punishing fire. I toy with the idea of being on the Jace Alt plan, but instead opt to dig further into my deck for Wasteland or Tarmogoyf. As if by magic I find one, Jace also spots a pure nightmare fuel of choke on top of my opponent's library, so he bought that away. I deploy Goyf. How about you try punishing fire on that, you fuck? He doesn't. He just... He propticates it instead. 
I force his bob to avoid him getting back into the game. I chase Storm to find another force and use that to stop him grabbing a knight or similar with the greens and zenith. Jace Storm sets up another ancestral and once again we enter the circus of Balu and all is good in the world! I finally waste that fucking burn willows and decide to abrupt decay his mocks while I'm at it to really hinder his mana. I beat his face in the streets and I I chase Storm a sharpness agent with Strix and bow down to the gods of worth. I am drawing so many cards and it feels so fucking good. My opponent eventually concedes under the sheer weight of the circus that we have become. Round and round it goes. Where the circus will stop, nobody knows. Game 3 starts off swimmingly, with a turn 1 death rate shaman into killing my opponent's turn 2 bob with a brock decay. My opponent then wastelands me, plays a second wasteland and plays a second dark confidant. I decay that one too, because fuck Bob. He tries to stick a silver library, but I explain calmly and succinctly that he's not allowed on this train, but I am the king of Card of March today. I do this for, by two for one himself uh, for the medium of force of will, because that is the correct play, and well, YOLO. I hem him down to one card in hand, which makes him lose a knight of the reliquary and a chance of the void. He wastes me down to a single land again, which I find mighty rude. I strix and find a silver library. I think I might take some books out, perhaps some academic texts on the topic of economics and pure, unadulterated value. I wasteland him off green. Before I can overzealously slam the library into play, I'm cordially invited for a trip to the salt mines. Wow, better lucky than good, he whines, tears welling up in his eyes. Sure, I respond, trying to determine how far I should push a man on the edge. He scowls, unhappy with his life choices. I decide to push further. You should try not to fire off your wastelands out of play with an active death rite shaman. It's, it's, not, it's a bad idea. Bendo999 adopts a contemplative silence for a brief moment. Finally, he responds, LOL, or then just top deck. Part of me wants to reach out and console him, to pick him up and dust him off, but this is war, not charity. I played the shaman on turn one, mate, I remark, flippantly. I cast an eye over his graveyard. I wonder if he could have kept a better hand. I wonder if I have drawn really well. A rock decay was really good against the cards he played. I smirk. You've played this match pretty poorly. Sorry. No hesitation now. He's angry, frustrated. I provoked the beast. Yep, and you've top decked a lot, lol. Like your last three draws. I'm taken aback. He knows my strategy. He understands that drawing cards off the top of my library and then playing them against my opponent is the correct line. He isn't as foolish as I first thought and he understands how magic works. I respond, questioning him. Like, magic cards you mean? Lol, yeah, I'm salty and... He fires back. I feel like we've stumbled upon common ground at this point. That's fair enough, mate, I tell him, nodding sympathetically. I offer him kind words. Just recognise there's something you could have done. I smile. Abruptly, he becomes defensive. Lol, like, I'm confused. Even if I didn't use those whistlings, I'd still be in the same position I am now as I can't catch any luck. I shrug once more. I'm not here to nurse his delicate ego at present. I'm here to conquer, to indulge in pure, unadulterated value. I lean in, I grin like a proper smarmy cunt, and I whisper, Say hello to YouTube while you're down there in the salt mines. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, just click the like button. It helps the video get more views. Um, subscribe and maybe share it with some of your local magic communities on social media. I don't know if you understand how hard it is to get these videos out there and get people watching them. The support for these style of videos from Reddit and everywhere has been overwhelmingly positive and I really appreciate it. Drop me a comment. One love from the hip hop streets. One love for the circus of value.